I'll briefly go over Feynman diagrams. Now, Feynman diagrams are very straightforward. As long as you remember that this axis here represents time. And this axis here represents space. So particles interact over time in a given space. All right? Now there are different interactions you need to know for AS level. You need to make sure that if you're given the title of one of these interactions, you can draw the Feynman diagram. Or also, if you're given a Feynman diagram, you can uh, state what interaction it is. But often they'll have parts missing out. And you have to be able to look at that and predict the missing particles. Now you can do that using your conservation laws. But I'll start with the very simple, straightforward Feynman diagrams. And later, in a different session, I'll look at conservation laws. Now, the first interaction we're going to look at is the neutron-neutrino interaction. So the neutron would be here, and the neutrino would be here. Now the neutron and the neutrino are going to interact. And the neutron is going to go away and leave as something else. Now when it goes away, it's going to leave as a proton. Because all of these interactions, if you've got a neutron, it always changes into a proton, and vice versa, a proton changes to a neutron. Now in order to go from having zero charge to a positive charge, you need to throw away a charge. And what charge must that be? Now it must be a negative charge. It must be a negative charge in order for this to balance. So the neutron gives off a negative charge, leaving it with a positive charge, which is the proton. So our neutrino interacts with our W minus boson, and that results in an electron. And later on, we can look at lepton number at the beginning and lepton number at the end, and we can see that that actually does balance. Okay? Now there are other interactions we need to know, as well as the neutron-neutrino. So, for example, the proton and the anti-neutrino interaction. So, in this case, we'd have a proton. And again, as always, that will change into a neutron. Now, if the proton is going to change into a neutron, it's positive, but it ends up neutral, so it must leave a W+. Plus. It must leave a W plus boson. It must, that must be the exchange particle, because it needs to lose the positive charge to be left with no charge. Now it's an anti-neutrino, so here we've got an anti-electron neutrino which interacts. Now if we remember our conservation laws, we'd remember that before the interaction we've got a proton and we've got an anti-lepton. So we've got a positive charge before, um, so we must have a positive charge afterwards and an anti-lepton, which is obviously a positron, okay, an anti-electron. Now, another interaction might be beta decay. Now, beta decay is where a neutron changes into a proton plus an electron. So beta decay is different. So beta decay, we've got a neutron changing into a proton. Now when it changes into a proton, it must be given away a negative charge. The exchange particle is the W minus boson. Now it's beta decay, so we know it's going to be given off an electron or beta radiation. Now in order for the lepton number to balance, the charge balances because we've got no charge at the beginning, but we've got a plus and a minus at the end. But in order for this interaction to occur, we need an anti-lepton here. So that would be an anti-electron neutrino would have to go there in order for beta decay to work. Now, positron decay would come next. Now, positron decay is similar to beta decay, but this time it's a proton decaying into a neutron. So we've got a proton coming in with a plus charge, and that decays into 
a neutron. So therefore the exchange particle must be a W plus because the W plus boson takes the positive charge from the proton, leaving it neutral with the neutron. So the exchange particle W plus boson. Now it's beta plus decay, that's a positron. So over here we've got our positron. Now then, we start with a positive charge, we've got a positive charge, so charge balances, we know baryon number balances, but at the moment lepton number doesn't balance, we've got an anti-lepton here, so we need another lepton over here, which would be our electron neutrino, but not an anti-electron neutrino, just an electron neutrino, okay, in order that lepton number balances. Um, another interaction would be electron capture, okay, so that's where we've got a proton combining, so we've got a proton and an electron. Now the proton and the electron are going to combine. What's happened is the electron has been absorbed, it's being captured by the nucleus, so the proton and the electron are forming. As always, proton goes to neutron. Now if you think from this point here, what must it throw away in order to have a neutral charge? The proton must throw away a positive charge, so it must be the interaction, sorry, must be with a W plus boson in order for this to balance. And what must be given off? Well, baryon number's fine, we've got charge is fine, but we've got a lepton before the interaction, therefore we must have a lepton after the interaction. Not an anti-lepton, just a lepton, so it must be an electron neutrino, all right? Now then, another interaction, the last one, would be a proton-proton or an electron-electron. Now this one here is very, very straightforward. It's the simplest of all the interactions. This is simply a proton and a proton come near each other. Now they are both charged particles. It's electrostatic repulsion, as we know. So they would just be repelled from each other and they would not change into anything else. But you do need to remember that the exchange particle for the electrostatic force is the virtual photon. The virtual photon. Now normally they are weak interactions that we've been talking about. So it's W minus or W plus boson. But in the case of this electrostatic force, it's the virtual photon, so it's important to remember that. Um, and they are the main Feynman diagrams that you might be asked to draw, to fill in gaps for, uh, to, to remember what the exchange particle is, what the charge in the exchange particle is, and so forth.